Jake T. Wilcox writes, a friend and I are currently debating universal free healthcare, and I'm arguing that it is absolutely necessary that the free market be allowed to determine the cost and quality of medical treatments, and those who can't afford them be left to charity and goodwill of people to be taken care of. All right, I, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry to, to, to just right away deconstruct part of what you said here, Jake. Uh, first of all, that it is absolutely necessary. Um, in some ways, when you look at libertarianism applied to, to the market, the economics of it, it's descriptive, not necessarily prescriptive. Because it's saying, hey, if you want to maximize production, these are the principles, these are the dynamics. And, and, and it's like praxology is the study of human dynamics, of human behavior, uh, that you see humans responding to incentives. And it's sort of, if we allow the incentives of the market to take place, this is what we're going to have. So yes, if we want, so, so if you want that abundance, you know, and, and there's nothing that supersedes that, and you want the most to be provided, the cheapest for the, for the most people to be as broadly available as possible, then yes. And, and you need the mechanism of the market to determine uh, where resources go for what. So you, you're right about that, but, but you're wrong about the wording there. And more importantly, when you say those who can't afford them be left to charity and goodwill, you say this as if it's like sort of as, as an opposition to this, and it's, but it's not. It, 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 it's part and parcel of the same thing, that we want people to be able to have health care as, as widely available, as inexpensively as possible, as efficiently as possible. And in a sense, some of this is kind of irrelevant because a lot of it's going to be taken over by artificial intelligence very soon here. But even then, you're going to want market forces to be able to direct resources for development and for making things cheaper and more broadly available for everyone. However, I realize that not all people are goodwilled or caring. He argues that not having access to free health care means being a slave to money and the right to life is denied if the condition is life-threatening. Now, this is you know, based on a presumption of communal ownership of, the, of humanity's medical technology. And it's, it's, it's easy to point that out, but for someone who's really embraced it, it is kind of hard to argue with. But it's, it's also very easy to disprove. And if they're open-minded, it should be fairly simple to get them to understand that just because you have something that is life-threatening does not give you a right to a, a cure or a service or a treatment uh, th that might not have existed prior to someone creating it. The, we're not talking about every human being having, equitable, having an equitable, uh, a right to equitable access to natural resources and all of those things that it would entail uh, medicine. But like, let's say you know, you're, you're gonna have a heart attack and you need a, a triple bypass surgery. You can't say that I'm killing you because I haven't yet invented the, the surgical procedure and the tools necessary to give you that triple bypass surgery. So if you really want, you, you have to you know, break this notion that, uh, that, that is this false attribution, that it's also being a slave to money, the right to life is denied if the condition is life there, and that I'm denying your life by not giving you something that could save your life. And the thing is, if, if, if you really want life-saving technology to be widely available, if you want it to be cheap and readily accessible, you want people to be able to purchase it. You want the market forces to be able to determine you know, how uh, resources are allocated because they will always favor more life. People will want that. And the more technology is developed, the more widely distributed it is. And this doesn't happen through central control. Central control freezes that progress. And I love the comparison of, of uh, the, the automobile versus the cell phone as, as a means of demonstrating the acceleration of technology. I think it's even more true with medicine. And with the, the car versus cell phone analogy, they say you know, it, it took uh, you know, maybe 80, 90 years from the invention of the automobile when only a rich man could afford it to. Rich man drives a Porsche, poor man drives a Honda Civic. But with the cell phone, it was that the technology President Clinton had at the start of his presidency in 1992 uh, was available eight years later to the average Bushman in Sub-Saharan Africa with a cell phone. The, the more technology progresses, the faster it progresses. So similarly, especially with medicine, with, pharma, uh, with, with uh, pharmacological drugs at least, anything that is chemically produced, manufactured, um, all the pharmaceuticals, they're uh, once it's figured out, 
it's made available to everybody. The, the cost going into research and development is vastly overcome uh, in, in distribution when it's something that's in high demand and it becomes available all the world over. And what always stops that is government, generally the intellectual property racket. And it's this myth that you need to give people the incentive of profit. No, you don't. You need to let the market demand be manifest for research and development properly. That'll give us more life-saving drugs sooner. They'll extend quality of life and, and, and duration of life for everyone. So we are at an impasse. And I was wondering if you'd be willing to share with you more in depth. He and I have both already read Freedom. Best regards and the most freedom, Jake. Jake, well, I hope that answers all your questions and helps you take your conversation with your friend to the next level. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.